So today I want to talk to you about the move and capture position commands. You can see I pulled this part away and um, what a lot of people don't notice is these two little, uh, two little commands up here. One is revert and I just press that and it just pulls it right back to the same old position. And the other one is capture position. And if you capture position, that move is shown as that capture position symbol down on the timeline. So if I go back, I mean, the question is what this is good for, right? So if I go back and I have the original position here, I might be able to do something like combine bodies and take this one body and um, uh, subtract it from the other and keep it as a tool. And then I can go in and use the move command, which is sort of the same thing as just grabbing and pulling with your mouse, um, and move it or move it to a new position, right? And I would be able to do the same thing again to do another combined command and then pull the uh, pull the volume of the of the cylinder off of the other part. This is a powerful command that other softwares don't really have because that motion, that uh, move or the capture position doesn't exist on the timeline. Um, another effect that people sometimes see that can be quite annoying is related. Uh, these, this is an assembly and it has been grounded, but if I grab one of these parts and move it, um, it moves and, and people wonder like, why? Why could that be? Because it's grounded. Well, the thing is, what you're grabbing here in this case is not even one of the subcomponents. Um, you're grabbing the body of the component because each component is made up of bodies as well. And so you have to think about what your selection criteria are. Are you selecting components? Are you selecting bodies? And even if your uh, top level assembly has been grounded, the parts in that assembly may not have been grounded. So if things are moving in ways you don't expect, you might want to look at that. Good luck.